Well, hello there, it's been a while. What have I been doing during that while, you may ask? This may not look like a lot, but trust me, this thing is freaking loaded up with features, and those are the only ones you can see. Let's get on with the demo, shall we? Okay, have you seen enough? Well, here's what the inside of this thing looks like, and as you can clearly see, it is loaded up. So firstly, what's powering the EV3s? It's not batteries, well, I mean, technically it is. It's a 12 volt lead acid rechargeable battery powering three step down converters, one for each EV3. Now, this super special key can remove a panel at the front of the machine so I can show you some stuff underneath of it. Any coins smaller than a quarter will just fall through the slot, and since quarters are thick boys, they'll just slide right on over it for the color sensor to see. And yes, this is where balls drain, but we'll get to that later. So once the quarter is inserted, how do you get your ball? Well, this is where that magic happens. Firstly, two strong motors turn a linear actuator. Then that linear actuator powers a scissor lift, which lifts the ball up. This thing here is a strain relief for the motor, so it can push the track up a little bit easier with the help of a rubber band. 
Once the ball is on the board, it can be knocked around by the flippers shown here. When the ball is on the board, the player can aim for a whole bunch of different things and each of them does something different. One of the targets the player can aim for is the drain blocker hole. When a ball lands in this hole, it pops right back up and activates the drain blocker for 10 seconds. And here is how the actual shooter works. It's just a motor and a color sensor measuring reflected light intensity. Another thing players can try to hit are these two things at the top. If both of them are hit, it triggers something that I like to call DEATH MODE. As you can see, DEATH MODE puts a whopping 10 more balls on the board. Why do I call it DEATH MODE? You may ask? Well... When the targets are hit, it releases a touch sensor in the back. At the very end of the game, the targets automatically reset, shown here. But hold your horses, let's rewind just a minute here. When the death mode multiball is activated, this is the thing that puts all those balls on the board. Look familiar? That's right. All this thing is, is a GBC ball pump. That's it. That's literally it. If you want to build one of these for yourself, for whatever reason, they are all over YouTube. All you gotta do is just search for LEGO GBC ball pump. If players hit the ball up this ramp, they have a 50% chance of getting a piece of candy. The machine detects if a ball made it up the ramp with this little thing here. And really quick, this is how the candy is dispensed. Players can also aim for this hole at the top. It gives them two quarters back, then returns their ball. When the player makes it into the hole, the ball rides this ramp right here. As you can see here, I'm using the exact same trick as I used before to make sure that the machine registers the ball. The ball is returned to the player using the same ball pump that death mode uses. The ball that was originally hit into the quarter hole is just returned to the death mode hopper. Finally, here's how the quarters are dispensed. The last obstacle on the board is a passive one that you might not have even noticed. It's all these black pins on the side of the board. For some crazy unknown reason, they're just really bouncy. As a matter of fact, these pins are so bouncy that sometimes the ball will even fly off the board. When the ball hits the sides, it just rebounds right back off, making for a more unpredictable movement. So when the ball does drain, it falls into this thing, and it's the most important part of this entire machine. What it does is track exactly how many balls have fallen down the drain. Now you may be thinking, why didn't I just use a single color sensor for this job? Well, I tried that, and it seemed to count two balls that were right next to each other as just one instead of two, let alone five, which could happen during the death mode multi-ball. What's going on here is it's actually the touch sensor that's registering the balls. All the color sensor's doing here is telling the motor to push the ball past the touch sensor if there's one present. Anyway, once the ball lifter ramp is full, any other balls just overflow into the death mode hopper. Pretty simple, right? Nope! I probably should also mention how the pop bumpers work. In traditional pinball machines, a solenoid, which is basically an electromagnet, pulls down an angled piece of metal, repelling the ball away. There's just one problem, LEGO doesn't make solenoids, so I just made a spinny thing that slaps the ball away if it comes near it. Also, if you care, here's how the candy and quarters are reloaded. And getting back the quarters using a super er special -er key. Finally, and I mean finally, here's a bunch of problems that I encountered with this machine and had to solve them in one way or another.
that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you had a good day, and I will see you in the next one.